Last week we started um, a letter from Wellington, um, a perspective of a major uh, capital city, obviously, in this country, um, a, a place that exists in its own little bubble um, to a large extent, but has enormous influence over our daily lives. And we underestimate that daily influence. It's not just that Parliament's located in Wellington um, and a whole series of infrastructure that's falling apart. No, 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 no. It's that in everything that we do, in every way in which we are affected by public services, the head offices in Wellington, the policy staff are in Wellington, um, the perspectives are in Wellington. And if you want to know why this country has gone and possibly woke over the last 10, 15 years, but the last six or five in particular, you need look no further than the upper leadership and the upper echelons of the public sector in Wellington, whether it's education, health, uh, transport, for God's sake, I mean, even to that, Aranga Tamariki, um, the, it, it, it lives in its own world. Now, having returned from overseas and made his fortune, um, being raised in the back blocks of central Otago, uh, Councillor Tony Randall stood, ironically, you'd actually think against the tide, almost canute light in a funny sort of way, two years ago for the Wellington City Council and got elected. Now, that's quite remarkable in many ways because Tony was as a conservative, um, I think you'd describe him as, but he's also had no politics in his background at all over the age of 60, so he's, well, I think he's over the age of 60, um, and um, has had a very successful career in, in IT and in communications technology, etc. So in some ways, him winning a seat, or even deciding to stand and then winning it, and he didn't just win it, he was a top polling candidate in his ward. He has ended up as something, as you would expect, of a gadfly, uh, but also of, you might argue, the conscience of the Wellington City Council, and he will be joining us uh, in the weeks to come giving us a letter from Wellington and some of the things that have been occurring uh, and that are likely to affect us in the week, next wee while. And he joins us again now. Tony, great to have you on the show again. Welcome to you. Good morning. Good morning and, and thank you for that very glowing reference. Um, no, I, I'm quite I impressed. To say, I'm quite impressed, I Tony. I to say, um, I mean, Wellington is, is, is not, you know, Wellington is, a, is not so out there that it doesn't have, you know, what you might call conservative or or normal people or whatever I mean, we're still full of new zealanders and so um you know there's a, it's just that 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 the, the the red green block dominates and i think that's what that's what you're talking about uh the domination of of this agenda uh set of what i would call agenda driven politics um and you know i'm here i i got elected uh by saying we should do the basics and there is a, a large minority that that still support that approach. Um, it's just that uh, we don't have the votes around the table and that's, we have some strange goings on. No, except if I look at the election results from 2023, Tony, um, and I compare Wellington, obviously, um, we've talked about it before on the show, uh, Wellington's performance compared to VRV, you know, the rest of New Zealand, um, you'd have to say that Wellington went in a slightly different, you know, that, 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 that they went... Yeah. Uh, Instead of going right, whether it was National Act New Zealand First, <laughs> their vote of protest was to go left. So you've ended up with what wrong a tie in Wellington Central as green electorates now. And, and, and there was a strong green vote in Wellington. So one presumes that the same yeah, sort of people that true. you're describing about as being sensible, um, they have a different way of looking at the world, yeah? Yes, and, and it's been my... It's part of the interesting uh, part of... of becoming a, a city councillor to work closely with them and see, uh, try and see how they, the thinking goes on behind uh, that, that sort of agenda. Mm. And uh, I, I guess that's why, um, you know, you outline that, uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm here for is just to outline a few stories to say, you know, this is how the thinking goes. You know, Can I that, say, though, if right? I have a look at the party votes, it's really interesting. Can I just take Wellington Central as a really good example of that? And uh, this is really <laughs> illustrative for the rest of us as well. If you look at the party vote for Wellington Central at the last election, and this, remember, they got rid of a... Well, the Labour candidate was standing down, weren't they? Um, and uh, they got... They put a, they've elected a Green Party MP who was a former... One of your colleagues, uh, Tabitha Paul, or Tamitha Paul, yep. um, sh she got elected. Yep. Um, although she gets elected first, who comes second 
the uh, Labour list MP and candidate who was a man by the name of Ibrahim Omir, he comes second. But if I look at the party vote for Wellington Central, here it goes. The Greens got 17,500 votes. They were by far the most popular party in Wellington Central. And then the Labour Party got 11,500. And the National Party got 9,800. So that's what, 28... 29,000 people voted Labour Greens, 9,800 voted National. It's not exactly a swing to the right, is it? <laughs> no, it's not exactly a swing to the right. You're absolutely right. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, as I said, perhaps I've gone uh, to the wrong place to run for, to get involved in politics. But it's very interesting. Oh, well, no, no, no. Somebody's... Oh, listen, and somebody's got to play the role that you do, otherwise, you know. And it's in a funny sort of way, I guess, I was thinking of an analogy for you, but also for people like you, Tony. You're the small boy in the crowd, aren't you? Um, watching the Empress procession and, 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 yeah. and looking at his new clothes and going, mm, he's not wearing anything. You're right. Yeah, and, and that's, in, in an opposition, uh, that's all you can do is point out that... Um, that they're doing stuff that's not backed up by evidence. It's not even necessarily backed up by public support. Um, you know, even, uh, even I'm sure even uh, Green Party, I've, I've had Green Party voters come to me and say, but we need to fix the pipes. What are you doing? You know, like the Reading deal, for example, what are you doing? Um, and so councils are really um, should be doing the basic stuff, is my view. They should be quite boring, really. And uh, it seems that the city council, one well, city council, has gotten itself, you know, just really to get itself into a whole lot of other stuff, you know. Okay, um, um, you've you know, just got... mentioned the Reading deal, the cinema deal. Now, um, for those of you who have been to Wellington, and I suppose it's most of us in actual fact, uh, one of the <laughs> Courtney Place was probably 20 years ago the most dynamic street in New Zealand. I, uh, it made Ponsonby look silly by comparison. Uh, and Paradise Drive, well, no, Paradise Drive is residential, but in terms of an entertainment um, street, it, it was stunning. And the streets that came off are Abel and Blair, for example, Courtney Place, ABC, just stunning. And the centre of the universe in many ways because um, obviously um, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and all those things were being made and it looked like Wellington was... I have to say, the coolest little city in the world. In fact, it called itself that. Others did internationally. It was something else. In the middle of that, there was the Reading Cinema Complex, which was, I think, a wonderful cinema complex. Went to it many times myself. And obviously, along comes the earthquake. It becomes um, uh, rendered um, immobile or inoperable uh, because of the damage that's caused there. And it's sat there um, ever since the earthquake, um, uh, the Kaikoura earthquake. Now, we talked about this last week um, about is it corporate welfare? The Wellington City Council is going to be buying the land. It is providing, I think, $30 million worth of funding to that effect. Essentially, it is some form of subsidies to Reading to, in actual fact, a major billion dollar, multi billion dollar um, entertainment um, corporate is going to be providing um, uh, some assistance to them. But you're saying now that there's somebody who is in actual fact offered to take over the Reading deal from the council. Is that right? Yes. Um, we've got uh, a, someone, Sir Mark Um So he's a, he's a self-made multimillionaire. He came with nothing. He's built himself to become a major property owner. And he's, you know, he's already become um, a very big uh, supporter and, and donator um, for the region, he's uh, support. He's, he's he's giving a lot of his money away. He built for at his own expense a whole children's hospital uh, on the campus of Wellington Regional Hospital. And wow. I've never know, heard of this guy. Who is he? Um, What's his name? Sir well, Mark De Knight. Sir Mark. Uh, can I? It's it's an unusual name. Yes. D u n a i t De Knight De Knight Schick, S c h i k. He's obviously Eastern European or something, is he? Yes, he is. And he's, he came along when we were looking to uh, revoke the, the Reading deal a couple of weeks ago and said, look, I've uh, pulled, up, pulled together a deal. I will, instead of the council buying the land and giving the money to Reading to help them rebuild their uh, building, he would buy the land, give them the money. Um, and then he also said, and this is where the generosity comes in, he said, and not only that, but he will 
put all of the money and the revenue into his own trust, and then in you know 20 years or 30 years' time, he would give give all the land back to Wellington. So he's going to buy $32 million worth of land and then give it back to us, um, just so that we didn't have to do the deal. And uh, you know, and 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 that was a, that's an incredibly generous deal. And you know, the the the, um, the problem is that you know he I, I, he hasn't really been treated. You know, the council doesn't seem to have treated him properly, um, having looked at this deal. Um, it was a very generous deal and it should have been explored. And, and the council said that, that they were talking to him about his offer. But he then, last Thursday, after we talked, he came on uh, News Talk ZB and said, no one's talking to him. He's made this huge offer, you know, millions of dollars offers to the city. And no one's even got the courtesy of said thank you, but no thank you in terms of a communication. Mm. And this is, this, this, why is that? I mean, it, it seems that that is it because uh, he's got too council, much money? Just quietly. I mean, the man's as you no. just said. Well, he donated fifty-three million dollars to build a new children's hospital, as you've just mentioned at Wellington Hospital. Fifty-three million dollars. He did that in twenty seventeen. Um, he's donated two million dollars to Victoria University to fund a chair in sustainable energy systems. Uh, he's got a foundation that regularly gives out money. Um, I would have thought that he passed the sniff test just quietly. 